Hey, hi, hello guys, good morning. It is Money Monday, and we're gonna have a great conversation with some beginner business owners. I am taking live Q&A on TikTok and on Instagram. So come watch with me while I help these new business owners out. Good morning, TikTok. Good morning, Instagram. I am not streaming live on YouTube like normal because I'm actually recording. Today is Money Monday and I'm doing a basically freestyle Q&A for any business related questions um, for beginner business owners. So if you are a new business owner, you're thinking about starting a business or if you've been in business for a while and you still have questions, if it's something I can help with, I would love to uh, put your questions in the comments. I got my little notepad here with my pen, ready to help if I can. Good morning, it's Money Mondays. Y'all come on in, let's talk some business. How was y'all's weekend? So while we're waiting on people, thank you. This is my this is my business attire. <laughs> so while we're waiting on people to join and come in and the questions to start rolling in, I wanna give y'all a little bit of background and history about Ash. If you are watching on TikTok, you know me as Life in the Ash Lane, but you can call me Ash. If you're watching me on Instagram, you know me as Ashley, okay? I have been a licensed cosmetologist for 17 years. I have owned a brick and mortar store, for those of y'all who don't know what that means, a physical location, since 2011. I have ran a successful business, ruined a not so successful business, rebuilt it, and so what I am enjoying doing right now is sharing my knowledge, my trials, my wins with brand new business owners because if I would have had someone to mentor and share game with me 10, 15 years ago, there's no telling where I would have been. But unfortunately, some of the lessons are bought and not taught, okay? So I have come in now and decided that if I can just share some knowledge that I have now that can save someone from making some of the same mistakes and save you time and effort and monies, monies, I'm happy to. So I know not everybody has a business. I know not everybody has the desire to be a business owner and that's totally okay. But if you are, this live is for you and I wanna share some info. So if you would like to, we are doing a beginner business owner Q and A. I want you guys to put your comments in or your questions in the comments please be patient because i am watching on two different platforms we got instagram going on one device good morning instagram and we have tiktok going on another device good morning tiktok fam and then i am recording so that i can create us a youtube video so y'all can reference back to this later so we've got our first question from ahmed I need a business license. My LLC has virtual address, but my business needs physical. It's home-based. There are services where you can go and online and find a virtual address. A lot of funding requires you to have a physical address that is not a P.O. box. And to legitimize your business, you do want a physical location. Good morning. So I would definitely search out some of those services for physical um, locations for virtual businesses 
or for at home businesses because I would not use my at home, my home address as my business's physical location. Because understand when you registered your LLC, any address that's on that LLC is public knowledge. That means they know where you live. So I can't speak for everyone's lifestyle, but I understand that we want some safety and security. Good morning. So one of our uh, A1 since day one, Kayla, definitely has some information that I don't have. Thanks for sharing. That's why we are building this community because I have opened this platform for everyone to share information. Knowledge is power. Sharing is caring. So Kayla, good morning, Kayla, says get a P.O. box. They offer the physical address option, which is great info. So thanks for sharing. So yes, Ahmed, I will look into that ASAP. Do we have any questions coming from Instagram? Good morning. Good morning, everyone coming in on TikTok. Y'all do me a favor. And yes, this is not a typical live, but this is a very needed and informative live. If you are a business owner, I would like for you all to double tap the screen, check in, share this live out with other business owners and leave your questions in the comments. Good morning or a virtual address, virtual office address. Exactly. Concrete Rose. They have so many services now because they know that people are operating from home or some people have service business that doesn't require a location. So I'm with you a thousand percent. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So again, for those who are just now coming in, this is a beginner business owner Q&A. If you own a business or you are interesting in, interested in starting a business, but you have some questions on where to start, how to start, what to do, please put your comments, questions in the comments. I'm going to get that right by the end of this live. Please include your questions in the comments so I can address them as they come in. Or if you are already an established business owner and you see a question that you have input in, this is definitely a community where we are sharing knowledge and we are encouraging and we are here to build one another up. Sharing is caring, guys. So some game is to be sold and not told, but if you got it for free, share it for free. I just believe that's how we're gonna be able to improve uh, together as a collective. So yes. I'm a business owner in Texas. I don't mind sharing. Concrete Rose, thank you so much. It's important to do so. Like, I definitely believe in investing in ourselves. I believe in mentorship. I believe in paying people for their time when they mentor you. But it takes two seconds to ask some preliminary questions, especially something like a man just asked, uh, what do I do about an address? I don't think anybody should be paying thousands of dollars to get that type of information. When starting a business, can I use a post office address or do I need a virtual address? When you are going out for funding and when you are applying for your LLC, they need a physical location that is not a P.O. box. Kayla shared earlier that now post offices are offering the virtual address. You are going to need a physical address. It is my opinion to go ahead and get the physical address, whether it's a virtual address or you go through the post office or you use another service. Um, oftentimes people start their business off in the wrong direction and they have to redirect midway through. Understand if your purpose is to start a business, to scale it, to grow it, you wanna structure your business how you wanna be in a year or two years. Think of it as an investment. So yes, I believe you need to do that. Do you still do taxes? If you have to file taxes, have you, if you haven't made any sales yet? Okay, I got what you're saying. If you have no sales, your business has no profit or no taxable income. But if you have a business license in your state, you still need to file. That also establishes a operation of your business. So go ahead and file. You're not going to pay anything but the minimum requirement. So for example, in the state of Tennessee, for a minimum use business license, 
if you have no sales, it's like $22 a year. So that's your business license. Your federal license and tax and whatnot, that may look different. But yes, I would recommend to file a tax return every year. Because also remember, one of the benefits of having a business is being able to write off uh, deductions. So if you don't file your taxes, you can't show expenses. So even if you have zero income, you still market it. You still had an overhead as you are building the business, right? How do you get credit for those deductions if you don't file a tax return? Yes. Can I use a section address? Can I use a section address? I'm not on the lease. I'm not quite sure what a section address is, but I have my handy dandy laptop right here. Um, I'm happy to look up. I'm not sure what a section address is. No, sir. If you are in any kind of government housing, you do not need to attach your business at all to that government housing. Don't do it. You're going to get somebody messed up big time. And that means section eight, that is your residential home. Most uh, government subsidized programs do not allow you to run a business out of that home. Don't do it. I'm looking to get a liquor license in Florida, but I'm not sure how to go about that. Victor, I have absolutely no not a knowledge of a liquor license at all. So I would not be comfortable um, advising you on that. I'm starting a notary slash signing business. Should I start an LLC with my very first check? Here's the thing. An LLC is good for multiple reasons. But for me, the two primary benefits of an LLC is separating you from the business and allowing the business to create its own business credit. If you know this is a business that you don't intend on scaling to have multiple people operate under that same business entity, I don't know that you need an LLC and you have to look at the liability standpoint. What is the liability that you could risk um, by operating your LLC as a notary? So I'm sure there's some kind of insurance and bonds that you may want to get just for like making sure that title signings are not done incorrectly and you could come back and be sued check what your liabilities are but if those two benefits are not something that you're interested in i don't know that i would invest in an, in an llc so soon but if you know you want to eventually get business funding i'm i'm with you and if you know that there's liabilities in play and you have personal assets that you want to separate your business from, yes, I would. Yes, I would. So can I use my home address for my business address or should I use a PO box? It depends. You can definitely use your home address as your business ad address, but I want y'all to understand that when you go to your local municipalities, your county clerk, when you file with your secretary of state, your address that is at attached to your business license and attached to your LLC is now public record. So that's totally up to you. But yes, just know that if somebody wants to do enough digging, they can find you. So it depends on what you're comfortable with, but you definitely can. But I would say go ahead and get you a virtual uh, virtual address for sure. These are great questions, guys. Thank you. Keep them coming. And if it's not business related or money related, we will not be discussing it on this live. <laughs> on this live. I'm in MA, so we are required to purchase E&O insurance. I want ability to make business deductions. I got you. Um, you can do business deductions as a sole prop. If your state requires separate insurance that should cover you, but I want you to double check with your state. I'm in Tennessee, so I'm not privy to all states and their requirements. But if you know this is something that you are going to want to do long term, if you know you're going to want to scale this business, an LLC is $300. 
And just remember that every year you got to pay that $300. If you feel that you're ready to make that investment, I believe in structuring your business for where you want to go, not where you are. So you use your best judgment on that. But I will never tell you to not do it because there are benefits. Where will I go for the business phone numbers? Too many options. If you want to look legit, you can do a 1-800 number and there are multiple services that offer that online. Of course, you can always do a Google number if you want to go ahead. And I don't, nothing against Google numbers, but all of that, we're trying to reach the person you are caught. I don't like that. Or you can just go on and add a secondary line to your phone bill and then you get to write off the whole phone bill. Don't tell nobody I said that. <laughs> Yeah, now I and I don't mean to be smart, but it's literally some things that I would say search yourself because all of these services they're gonna have a base of of regular features, but they may offer some things that your business needs that maybe my business doesn't need, if that makes sense. So I would definitely encourage everybody to do their own research. And side note, that gives me an opportunity to do a great disclaimer. Trust but verify. There is nothing wrong at all with you taking advice and receiving advice and trusting that advice. But I still need y'all to be verifying this advice because I could have the best of intentions of giving you great advice and I'm human. I may make a mistake. I still need you to verify. OK, that's why I stress that these are beginner business owner Q&A. I am here for basic information but i still need you to verify because everything is going to be different based on your specific needs how is it best to set up bank accounts for business and what should be auto removed for taxes that's a great question now i'm going to share what i do what i do what i do okay this is just my opinion so you need to go and file your llc your EIN, your business license. If you don't want to do an LLC yet, that's totally fine. You need an EIN, you need a business license. Those two documents, you walk into whatever banking institution that you want to bank with and prevent, uh, present those documents. That will allow you to open up a business bank account that is not attached to your social because the EIN is your business's social. Every dollar that you make needs to go into that business bank account that is showing a history of business that is showing your income and it's just good to keep that money separate. Do not put your business's income into your personal checking account. That is called commingling funds. When you finally do start your LLC, if you haven't already, that is what will eliminate the uh protection from a pass-through entity. What a pass-through entity means is people have started an LLC just for the benefits, but they don't have the responsibility. You want to be able to file taxes, but you co-mingling this money. Your money and the business money is mixing together. You're using business money to pay personal bills. Don't do it, okay? So when you go into whatever banking institution you want to use as your business's banker, you are going to open up a checking account and you are going to open up for me. I'm going to tell you what I did. I opened up two checkings and a savings. Why? Because one checking is deposits only. All the money goes into that. I'm just telling y'all how my mind works. It may be a little too much for you. For some people, they're cool with all money going into one pot and all money coming out of one pot. That just doesn't work for me because I like to have a little control of my money, if I'm honest. So I open up two checking accounts and I open up a savings account. One checking account, deposits only. All my credit cards go in there, credit card payments. All my Venmos, Cash Apps, Zelle, all of my invoices, all monies are deposited into that checking. Now, at the end of the month, when I reconcile my accounts, I transfer all the expense money into the second checking account and what i mean by expense money is all of my lease payment my rent my utilities the things that you're gonna pay your fixed cost 
that you're going to pay at the first of the month or whatever you want to use as your billing cycle. Okay. Then I have a savings account. That savings account is not linked for transfers. I don't want nobody getting a, a little froggy and, and feeling like they can transfer money in that savings account. You're putting 20% for your taxes in that savings account. In that savings account, you're putting 10% to the side for your um, accidentals. Things break, stuff happens, okay? So that's how I do my bills. And then at the end of the year, when you file your taxes, if you've put up 15, 20%, if you've put 10% up for accidentals and you only end up paying 13% out, you have a surplus. And then you can decide how you're gonna reinvest that money. But for me, if you are starting a business, very minimum, you need to go get an EIN and you need to go get a business license. And then you need to take those two documents to your business, uh, to your uh, banking institution of choice. And I can only speak for what I have experienced. I bank with Bank of America. I know some people don't like that bank. Shout out to Bank of America because y'all ain't never done me wrong. Matter of fact, call me. Let's talk about some sponsorships. Um, Bank of America, anytime I've ever opened up a new business checking account, uh, savings account, they always offer me business credit every time. It may start as just a $500 line of credit, but guess what? It is a free resource for you to start building inventory, using it for advertisement and start building your business credit. Okay, so I know that was a long about way, but I hope that answered your question. Is there an app or a way to have the percentage come straight out of the business account for taxes? I'm not sure. Now, I know um, services like QuickBooks has a bookkeeping option where you can connect your bank accounts and it can do your numbers for you to a certain extent. But I believe it's best for you to physically transfer this money the reason i say that is because you don't want no incidentals of anything going into overdraft because it just so happened to be a slow week and now you got money going out that you don't have that's just my opinion just my opinion um but you know with most banks you can set up an auto transfer mine is set up as an auto transfer for a percentage of the low end of my income so for example, if I know on average, my business makes a thousand dollars a week, just throwing a number out there and I'm going to save 20%, then I'm going to take $200 and have it auto transferred every Monday when my accounts reconcile. Some weeks you may have only needed to transfer a 150, some you may have needed to do three, but if you stay in the middle, at least you'll get, um, enough of the money a, a a good amount of the money transferred which accounting apps would you suggest for someone who is anxious about business accounting your accounting app needs to be your bank account and i do love quickbooks quickbooks i do love quickbooks quickbooks will allow you to sync your accounts to your quickbook account and then it will like keep up with all of your expenses once you set your profile up you have to set it up first, but once you set it up, um, it'll do it on, on its own every time you refresh or update your QuickBooks. Don't be anxious, just create a system. Just create a system and follow that system. So if you know I'm a hairstylist, for example, so I'm gonna use my business as an example. Um, I work basically Wednesday through Saturday in my salon. Saturday is the last monies that I collect, but all of my credit card payments from Friday and Saturday, they don't hit my bank account until Monday. Monday morning after I drop my son off at school, I go to the ATM and I deposit my cash if I have any or any checks if I have any. All of my cash apps, Venmo's, um, they typically hit my bank account by Tuesday, Wednesday at the very latest. So if you are needing to wait on every dollar that you make, figure out when that money is going to hit your account or reconcile. 
So if it's Wednesday, that's fine. I make sure all my cash apps and my Venmos are set up for transfer at the end of my Saturday evening. So when I finish cleaning my salon, before I leave the salon, I sit down and I transfer all my monies. On Monday, all my checks, all my credit cards have hit. Monday by nine o'clock, all my cash and my checks are in that bank account. So I know by Wednesday, all the money that I made for last week is on is in my bank account. Then that's when you can start doing your transfers and doing whatever you need. If that's what you need to do. Do I use Excel, baby? No, sir. I don't know how to use Excel efficiently. All of them little columns be tearing my nerves all to pieces. Listen, if you are using Excel, you the goat. Because I can't. <laughs> QuickBooks is the replacement for Zelle. Do you have any advice on putting a monetary value on information? That's hard. Do I have any advice for putting monetary value on information? Your intellectual property is the most valuable thing that you have. Now, you have to ask yourself, how much money is that going to make that person when you give them that information? So for example, if it took me 10 years and $20,000 of my cosmetology education to perfect the information I'm, I'm selling you, and I know by teaching you this skill or sharing this information in six months, you could be making 20,000 extra dollars, how much do you think someone would pay to make an extra $20,000? It is very hard to place a value on intellectual property. But for me, how much is your time worth? How much is your profit opportunity worth to them? It's so many different factors. And then you also have to take into consideration what the market is going to allow you to charge. Some people will pay whoever, whatever. We see we have some huge um, inspiration, motivational speakers that are charging $100,000, $200,000 for meetings with them. So, hey, I'm not putting a limit on what your earning potential is. But that's a hard question for me to ask. But you, I mean, to answer. But you have to take those things into consideration. What did you invest to make that, to gain that knowledge? How long did it take you to gain that knowledge? What kind of earning opportunity is it going to give the person that pays you for that knowledge? You need to take all those things into consideration. And yes, Shamaya, I would consider that consulting. If you have been the subject matter expert in your industry, you are now considered a consultant. Yeah, baby, you're going to pay me for my experience. You're going to pay me for the time I've put in perfecting said skill or developing the knowledge. Yeah, you're going to pay me. You're going to pay me well. Because also, think of this. If it took me 10 years to learn it the hard way, to get it out the mud, as we say, but I'm going to teach you this 30 day class, give you 30 days of mentorship, give you a proven system to follow. And I save you 10 years of strife. How much is that worth to you? That's what you got to ask people. And I want to use this analogy. I can go to Walmart right now and buy this bottle of water for 25 cents. But I got to put clothes on, get in my car use my gas, drive to Walmart, walk all the way to the back of Walmart. Don't y'all hate that? The stuff you be needing be in the back of Walmart. Then I got to stand in line, get back in my car, come home so I can drink this water. Yeah, I paid 25 cents for it, but look at, at, at all the effort I had to put forth to get this bottle of water. Now, I can also go on Amazon and pay 250 for this same bottle of water, but it's going to be at my door in two hours. And I didn't have to put no bra on what is that worth to you? And I, I mean, just, just being serious. <laughs> yeah, ladies, y'all know we hate putting them bras back on. <laughs> if they won't tell you, I will, okay? But do you see, is it worth paying that extra $2.25 for the convenience, for the savings of time, effort? People will pay for convenience, big time. Someone just asked, I'm in IT. I'm wanting to learn how to go into business for myself. Find a way to monetize the skill set that you have 
and offer it in a way that the average is not. Take your skill set and figure out how you can offer a solution to the problem. So just let me throw out, and I know I don't want to diminish your skill set, but let's say you're in IT. You know how to fix all the computers. That's what you do. Maybe in your area, you have a high population of boomers who don't know how to use their computers. Those boomers want to be able to Zoom with their grandkids, but they don't know how to do it. Can you offer an in-home service where you pull up to these people, walk them through, and then charge them a premium? I'm not saying take advantage of people. I'm saying I am here to walk you through on your device in the comfort of your home. Because a lot of boomers, they get nervous out in public doing unfamiliar things. So that is a convenient service for them. You get what I'm going? Answer a problem, create a solution to a problem, and then figure out what your target audience is and how you can package it for them. That's how you take your skill set and monetize it to start your own business. So I do want to share this with you all. If you are a new business owner, structure your business today based on where you want to be in a year, two years, three years. Do not be afraid to invest in the proper structure. Remember that funding takes a year to two years to um, obtain in your LLC. Stop letting these people tell you you can get a no docs loan in 10 minutes. Something is not right about that, right? So go ahead and structure based on where you want to go. Set up a website because people are going to Google you. They're going to want to figure out who you are. Grab all of your social media handles, even if you're not ready for it. Grab your domains, even if you're not ready for it. Okay, and that will set you up for success as a new business owner. Top tier information.